everyone. So I wondered what would be the best way to introduce myself and I figured the best way to do that would be to show you things that I love. So here are some things that I love. These are traveler's notebooks and inside I have watercolor swatches and that is another one of my loves. So uh, I'll just go through and sh tell you what these notebooks are and then I'll show you the inside and how I'm using this as uh, watercolor swatches, places to hold those. So these are Chic Sparrow notebooks. They are deluxes in narrow. You can kind of see the top here. And uh, this one is Mr. Darcy in the Austin line. Uh, formerly this was called uh, Mr. Darcy Toffee, so they were recently changed. This is the new one uh, with the matching stitching, which is super beautiful. And then this one is in the Tea House collection and it is chamomile. I changed the elastic on this one because I'm not really a fan of white elastic. Uh, so I put a sort of golden colored elastic on there and I also replaced the inside elastics as you can see. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna start with the chamomile. So, as you can see, there are three inserts in here, and these are all Traveler's Notebooks brand uh, inserts. They are the, car they have card holders inside. So there's three on each side, and in theory you could put business cards or whatever in here, but I am using them for watercolor swatches, and this is just sort of a random page that I opened it to here. It's really the perfect size to keep all of these swatches together. And I'll go into a little bit of how I make them, and then I'll do a, a quick run through of what's in here, and then what's in the Mr. Darcy notebook. So here we have a little plastic block. This is from Tim Holtz. It's just small enough to hold, so I'll show you, this little guy. So this, you take off the plastic pieces, affix it to this plastic uh, holder here, and then it becomes a stamp. So you can use it to stamp, and I've used it to stamp these little rectangles of watercolor paper to put these little swatch things on. So this stamp is from uh, Waffle Flower, and I got that off of Amazon. Uh, and this stamp really does need to be cleaned, but uh, <laughs> when it is clean, it makes a great impression. I use permanent uh, stamp pad, a permanent stamp pad, and that's really important because otherwise it's gonna smear all over the place when you put watercolor over it. So I'll just put those back in here. <clears throat> And then in here, I have sort of my sample swatch and then a couple of extras. So uh, this one I ended up keeping because I didn't realize that I had swatched this color twice. So I kept the second one and am just using it as sort of a guide on how to do that in the future. And these are just blank. I had a whole stack of them that I'd made and I actually made a few stacks and had to go through a couple of times. Uh, but these are the only ones that I have left now. If I need more, I will make more, although my notebooks are getting kind of full. So I'm either going to have to get more notebooks, <laughs> oh no, right? <laughs> or uh, just not buy as much watercolor. <laughs> and that's, that's also an oh no. So um, as you can see here, I'll just show you the different parts that are on this little swatch card. So up here at the top, is uh, the mass tone, and that is just the color right out of the tube. Uh, I don't know how much you all know about watercolor, but I'll try to put this in a, as much layman's terms as I can. So then this next one is just a gradient wash, which basically means you've got full strength over here, and then you gradually add a little bit of water to wash it out. And here, as you'll see in the little sample card, there's a black mark there, a black line, and that is to test how opaque or translucent your watercolor is. So then you've got a little spot to put the name of the watercolor color, the brand, you can see this here is Rose of Ultramarine from Daniel Smith, I've abbreviated that DS. 
And then here is a space for whether the color is granulating, how transparent it is, whether it's staining or semi-staining or not staining at all. Uh, and this is the light fastness. And then down here you'd put your pigment number. I did not do this on this one because I discovered that this was a duplicate before I got to that point. Um, I also tried out rounding the corners, but I realized that that would just be a ton of work to do that on each and every one because I have so many. So I did not go ahead and do that on the rest of them. But now I can kind of see what it looks like and if I want to do it in the future, yeah, maybe if I have the extra time. I don't know how often that comes up, but... So now I will go into, so I'm just going to show you how I've organized them. So in this first one, I've listed the brands. So I'm just telling you that it's watercolor swatches. And then this is Winsor Newton, Lucas and Jackson's. The next insert is Holbein or Holbein, however that's pronounced, and then Mission Gold. And then the next book, notebook, I have Core, Da Vinci and Turner. And then let's see, I'll go through this last one just a little bit. And the whole reason to have these is so that when I'm creating little travel watercolor palettes, um, and I'll go into more of that if you'd like in future videos, but I like to kind of see what the colors are going to look like together uh, in a palette. So for example, so these are core watercolors, which, uh, which are really great. Uh, so let's say I wanted to have just a limited palette with just the three primaries. So that'd be super limited, right? So I'd say, oh, well, which yellow do I want? I have a few yellows to choose from. I have some more, some darker yellows and some lighter yellows. Let's go with Hansa Yellow Light. Sorry for the crinkling there. <laughs> it takes a little bit to take them out. So I want Hansa Yellow Light, and then I want a red. So let's say... Even though this isn't really red, it's magenta, but it counts as a red. Let's say I'm going to use the quinacridone magenta, and then I'm going to go through and find a blue, and let's just go with ultramarine, right? And so then I can see what they look like next to each other. Or I can compare different brands in different colors. Um, I'm not going to do that because that's going to take a little bit of time, but if I if anyone wants it, I can probably do a flip through of how I have this organized completely. This is really just to show you how you can use this particular notebook and these inserts, and this has really worked well for me. So I'm just going to put these back in here. Where's my yellow? And then magenta. And they, they come in and out pretty easily. Um, like I said, these are getting a little full. Uh, and then in, I'm gonna loop that up. Oh, and here I have a little Da Vinci travel brush. And uh, here, I'll take it out so you can see. So this is just a Da Vinci travel brush in size five. Uh, this actually came with one of my travel watercolor palettes that I bought, um, and I, I switched it out and didn't, you know, didn't use it for that anymore. So, so now um, I figure, oh, what am I going to use it for? I'm going to use it for, for this purpose because I need a brush to do the swatches with, and this one turns out to be perfect for that. So I've also labeled these with a label maker. I've, I have a bunch of travel uh, watercolor brushes, which I can also share in a different video, but uh, I have went through and labeled them all like this, and it's, it's worked pretty well. Because before, this is actually labeled here too, but some of them, they don't have a label anywhere on the, the outside. So I was like, oh my God, what brush is this? And I have to open them all and figure it out. So that way, it's all kind of in the same convention. And then this little guy, this uh, little uh, clip, pen clip, is from Kaweco. I got this off of Jet Pens, and I don't remember what this is supposed to be for. Um, I think I had a duplicate of this, which is why I tried to see if it would fit. Um, I'll put a link down below to uh, which one this is exactly, but it per fit perfectly on here, so I was very excited about that. So then I just clip that back on there, and then there you go. And then this one, I'll swap this out. 
this one is similar. And here, instead of putting the stamp like I had in the other, I just have stickers from or business cards from places where I buy watercolor things from. Uh, for example, like Art Toolkit, which I'll tell you more about in a future video. Um, rosemary brushes, I love those. Uh, Kings Creek, they make beautiful handmade watercolor palettes, which I'm actually going to do a video on that as well. So it's not much different. What did I put in the back here? Oh, my receipt for my watercolor palette. <laughs> okay, so there's that. And then, um, so here it's the same kind of deal. This has Schmincke, Daniel Smith. That's all the colors that are in here. And I actually have so many Daniel Smith that it is taking up this whole middle notebook. As you can see, this is just Daniel Smith and then part of this other one. So I think you can tell which is my favorite brand. And then this one has just a sort of a hodgepodge of a variety of different brands. Sometimes I'll only have one tube of something and then I'll, I'll swatch it in here. And I tried to keep these organized by color, but then when I got into this one in particular, it didn't really make sense to do that because I was keeping them by brand. So um, so it's kind of all over the place. You know, if I was super, super organized, I would make it all by color, but, but instead I'm just organizing by, it by brand. And my intent is to at some point decorate these covers because right now they're really plain. Um, but these are great. I, I really love these and this is a great use for them. I actually have used them in a variety of other ways that are, you know, put business cards in them and um, they're really great and they're not that expensive. So it's kind of nice to have something like that. Nothing in the back pocket, but I do have this pen. This is just a fine liner from Winsor Newton. It's a 0.8. This is what I'm using to uh, write on the swatch cards. So basically I would need both <clears throat> both of these notebooks in order to make a new swatch from from scratch because I would need the stamps or the stamp that's in here I would need the brush that's here and then I would need the pen to mark up the sample so that's pretty much it for this one I am gonna leave it there and uh, please feel free to like or subscribe and or subscribe uh, and I'm gonna have a lot more videos of both travelers notebooks and other art supplies including watercolor watercolor is my favorite medium so that's what I do the most of but I plan to branch out and do some other things too depending on people's interest so um, there you go and thanks for watching bye